Are you currently living in a post-apocalyptic wasteland in Australia due to the Omnic Crisis? And are you finding it hard to come up with a great post-apocalyptic name? Well, you're in luck because I have a state-of-the-art, patent-pending algorithm that will come up with the best post-apocalyptic Junker name for you. Introducing the Junker Name Generator. Simply give me your name and then boom! you'll get a name right back. Say your name was George O'Hara. Our algorithm would come up with this name, Tire Frog. And trust me, this is the same algorithm that Junkrat, Roadhog, and Junker Queen use to come up with their names. All it's gonna cost you is five easy payments of $89.99. Just call 1-800-JUNK and you can get your Junker name today. Here's the uh, Junker name generator in case you actually want to use it. Uh, let me know what your junk name is in the comments. Thank you to Unicorn Overlord for sponsoring this video. Unicorn Overlord is the rebirth of retro fantasy strategy that embarks audiences on a nostalgia-infused epic SRPG adventure, inviting them to forge alliances, liberate kingdoms, and explore an expansive world with stunning visuals. I mean, look at that. It's pretty nice. It's the classic heroic fantasy tale that pays homage to the 16 and 32-bit strategy RPG games of the past. With its gorgeous modern 2D aesthetics for tactics fans that want to test their real-time strategy skills with 40 to 50 hours of gameplay. Unicorn Overlord is available physically on the Nintendo Switch, Xbox X, and PS5, and available digitally on Nintendo Switch, Xbox X and S, PS5, and PS4. So if you're interested in Unicorn Overlord, it's available for pre-order right now, and launches March 8th. 2024. And if you want to try it before you buy it, a demo is available now with progress carrying over to the full release. So click the link in the description down below to check it out. Thank you once again to Unicorn Overlord for sponsoring. But now, back to the video. Roadhog is one of the original tank heroes in Overwatch. And if you watched my recently made junk rap for noobs, a lot of his backstory will be very similar. So go watch that first if you haven't. Anyways, his real name is Mako Rutledge, and he was born and raised in Australia. Although, through his skins, you can see that he's definitely a Kiwi of Maori descent, which is pretty cool. After the Omnic crisis, the government gave the Omnics a portion of Australia's land as a way to establish peace. But this obviously pissed off a lot of Aussies, Mako included. So he joined the Australian Liberation Front to try and take back these lands. However, in one of their raids, they ended up blowing up an Omnium core, which destroyed most of the outback, turning Australia into a full-on Mad Max apocalyptic wasteland. To survive, Mako adapted by putting on a gas mask and riding his motorcycle everywhere, giving himself the name Roadhog. For years, he mostly just kept to himself on his farm. But one day, at a bar, he ran into none other than Junkrat, who asked Roadhog to be his bodyguard in exchange for some of his treasure. After negotiating their split up to 50-50, Roadhog reluctantly agreed, and he protected Junkrat on all of their escapades. Together, they committed so much crime. Arson, robbery, you name it, they've done it. They stole from everyone and everything, eventually getting kicked out of Junkertown and becoming enemies of the Junker Queen. But that didn't stop them. They instead would just go international and became two of the most wanted fugitives in the world. So while Roadhog will never admit it and often seems annoyed at Junkrat and even calls him an idiot all the time, I think deep down, like deep, deep down, Roadhog knows that Junkrat is his best friend and arguably his only friend. That's Roadhog's story in a nutshell. So now that you know who Roadhog is, let's learn how to play him, shall we? Roadhog is one of the many heroes that received huge reworks recently. Before, Roadhog used to be the guy that would hook somebody and then one-shot kill them, but that really isn't what his kit does anymore. Let me explain, starting with his scrap gun. The scrap gun does anywhere from 48 to 160 damage per shot, with a total of six shots between reloads, and the damage starts falling off between 30 and 50 meters. The scrap gun is simply a shotgun. It's great in mid to close range and will easily secure your kills. Every now and then you'll get a kill from a little bit further away than you expect, but for the most part, you're gonna wanna stay close range with this bad boy. Because in close range, it will shred through shields and it will shred through tanks. And while before this gun used to have an alternate fire that would shoot his weapon sort of at a distance, he's really not that guy anymore. So don't go around trying to 1v1 Widowmakers and Hanzos. It's just not your thing, okay? You're a close range brawler boy. Roadhog's first ability is easily his most iconic ability, the chain hook. You can hook people up to 20 meters away and 
If you successfully land the hook, you'll drag them right in front of you, making them easy targets to kill. The hook itself will only do five damage, but the fact that the enemy is, you know, right there, point blank in front of you, they'll be taking a lot more damage. Just hook them and then shoot them and then, oh, that's right, they don't die anymore with that combo. So while before you could just hook, shoot, and then melee and guarantee a kill, it's not going to be that easy anymore. Especially because a lot of heroes gained extra health. But you can still kind of get an almost guaranteed kill if you shoot first, then hook, then shoot, then melee. That will almost guarantee kill most squishy heroes. But the hook is less of a tool to just one-shot kill people and more a tool to put enemies in a more vulnerable position. because dragging them away from the team and towards your team will probably end up killing them anyway. So it's still a really good ability. It's just not as broken as it used to be. And trust me, it used to be broken. You used to be able to hook people like behind the wall. Remember those days? <sighs> the good old days. So while the one shot kill was removed from the hook, you can still get environmental kills with the hook. So if you see a roadhog near the edge of a map, stay away. Because if they hook you, you're gonna die. Every. Single. Time especially on Elios Well. If you're on Elios Well and you see a Roadhog, stay away. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Do not approach that well. I repeat, do not approach that well. Roadhog's next ability is his newest ability, Pigpen. They gave Roadhog a trap. This trap will do 60 damage on initial impact and then 30 damage a second for three seconds in a four meter radius. And this radius will also slow the enemies down. So this trap gives Roadhog a little bit more defense. And if placed correctly, it can also be used as part of a new Wombo combo where you put a trap down, hook your enemy towards the trap, then shoot them, then melee them, and then boom, they're dead. It's a little more complex and a little less consistent, but hey, it's a guaranteed kill. I know that's what you guys want. But in general, the trap is really good for trapping. Enemies caught in it will take a lot of damage, and since they're slow, they'll be easy targets for you and your teammates to kill. So the trap is genuinely a great trap. And it was probably made by Junkrat because they're best friends. And since the trap won't go away even if you're dead, you can even get kills when you're dead. It just happens. It just says triggered like a Twitter user in the replies. LOL triggered much snowflake. Why is the trap like this? Roadhog's final ability is take a breather. Now this also got a rework because before you would use it and gain health and then it would be on a long cooldown. Now it's on a very short cooldown but instead has a resource meter. So you can either press it a little bit to gain a little bit of health or you can press and hold the take a breather button and gain up to 450 health. You can use it as long as the resource meter has resources. This allows for Roadhog to actually tank things. And because it has a very short cooldown, you can kind of heal between shots and hooks. Roadhog's survivability is absolutely insane now. And if you're surviving and able to get a kill in between, you're doing your job. And finally, we have Roadhog's ultimate, Whole Hog. This ultimate lasts 7.5 seconds and can do up to 896 damage. That's if all the pellets land. I know that's not going to happen, but I'm just saying mathematically, that's the max. This ultimate is so great for for racking up a ton of kills if the enemy team isn't ready for it. It will shred through enemy shields like paper. If an enemy's near a wall, they're basically wallpaper. And it will knock enemies back like paper airplanes. If you time it right, this ultimate can get a ton of kills and absolutely destroy enemies. And maybe even get play of the game? Oh my gosh, I guess the environmental kills are just worth more than the ultimate kills. The more you know. As the person who helped Roadhog make his name, you know I know everything you need to know about Roadhog. So listen to these pro tips. Number one, your biggest counter by far is Ana. Not only are you such an easy target to sleep, but being anti-nated is devastating for your kit. If you can't self-heal, you're just a sponge taking a ton of damage. So before you go in all aggressively with your ultimate or your abilities, make sure the Ana is either dead or doesn't have her nade. And that's also why Roadhog pairs very well with Kiriko, because Kiriko Suzu will cleanse you from the Ana anti. But let's be honest, Kiriko pairs well with everybody as long as Ana exists. And I guess technically Reaper is a counter, but like, I don't know, that feels more like a 50-50 to me. 
Number two, when enemies are holding a high ground and think that they have some type of advantage on you, remember that you can hook them off the high ground. Most enemies won't expect that to happen to them, and when it does, they'll be sitting ducks and easy targets for you and your team to kill. Seriously, if you can, save your hook for pulling people off the high ground. We won't be having any Obi-Wans out here, okay? Number three, Rodog has the ability to just not shoot his ultimate mid-ultimate. Back in my day, when you use Roadhog's ultimate, you couldn't cancel it at all. So you're kind of screwed if you're shooting into a Zarya bubble or a Genji deflect or a Sigma suck. But now you can just choose not to. So either wait for those abilities to just not be up, or you can kind of bait them into using those abilities early, and then just kill them with your ultimate. Number four, this isn't really a pro tip and more of a suggestion to the developer. So Blizzard, hear me out. Personally, I feel like Roadhog has a bit of an identity crisis right now. Before, in the 6v6 Overwatch 1 days, he was an off tank that was great for securing kills on enemies in bad positions, or he could even flank. He can't really do that anymore since, you know, no, there's only one tank. So a lot of his power and a lot of his uniqueness was stripped away the moment it became 5v5. However, when the 5v5 came, Doomfist, who was a damage hero, became a tank. What I'm suggesting is that Roadhog switch off a tank and become a damage hero. Obviously, you'd have to make his hitbox a lot smaller and maybe even his character model slightly smaller. Maybe he loses weight canonically or something. But I would love to see him back to his former glory of being that hook shoot guy. Because right now, he doesn't really tank that well. And he feels kind of lost. Now, people in the comments section, you can feel free to disagree with me, but that was the rework I was hoping we would get with Roadhog and not keeping him in a tank role where he doesn't really belong. Roadhog has always been one of my favorite heroes ever. I think he was one of, if not the first hero that I got a gold gun on. I love him. The OG fans will know that my original 50 tips video ever made on this channel, one of my first videos I ever made was on Roadhog because I loved playing him and he always had a special place in my heart. It's actually wild how long it took for me to make a for noobs on him. And I'm glad I chose now to do it because he's a completely new hero than what he was when I first made videos on him. He's still fun to play, but I don't know how he is competitively. But how is he for noobs? For noobs, I would still say he's very easy to play. He's a very straightforward character. You still just have to hook and shoot people and you'll get a ton of value out of that. But what do you guys think? Do you think Roadhog is easy to play? Do you think he's hard to play? Do you think he's underpowered and needs buffs or overpowered and needs nerfs? Or do you think, like me, he should just be shifted to a damage role instead? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay guys, I got a lot of phone calls for this Junker name generator, so uh, I'll catch you later. Ya yeah, noob!